Hey, how's it going, everybody? In this video, I'm going to go through this Leco 37 Sudoku solver. This question was asked by DoorDash, Microsoft, and other companies in the past two years. Let's take a look. We need to write a computer program to solve Sudoku puzzle by filling out all the empty cells. If you haven't played with uh, Sudoku before, essentially we, what we need to do is just fill out those empty cells. We have a board like this. So each, each one of the digit 1 to 9 must occur exactly one at each row. And then, so this is the first row, and then we will place the number 1 through 9 in, in the empty cell. So for example, here 5 already in the first row, so we cannot place 5 anywhere else. And 3 is already here, so we cannot place 3 anywhere else in the first row. So this is the one, this is the first constraint. And second constraint is to each of the number 1 to 9 must occur exactly once in each column. So for example, 5 is already here. So we cannot place five anywhere else in the first column, and but we can place one, right? Because one has not occurred yet. And then this is the second constraint. The third constraint is within this uh, three by three sub box, and each of the number one to nine must occur exactly once. So again, so five is already here, so we cannot place five anywhere else in uh, within this uh, the first sub box. So that is the description of the problem, and. I recommend to solve this uh, valid Sudoku medium problem first before um, you want to have a deep dive of this uh, harder problem. And also, I will place a link to the video that I have for this one in the description down below. Because when I go through this problem, I assume that you already uh, finished this problem. Uh, let's go through the solution. Uh, we're gonna use the backtracking method to solve this problem. Let's take a look. And this is the entire code. And we will use the um, the class. As you can see, the all the function that's defined outside the main function. The main function is the soft Sudoku, and they are defined outside of it, and they are all linked by this class solution. And let's take a look at the the main function. So first, we look at self dot rows. Essentially, this is the first constraint that we talked about right here. And I use a a default deck with um, the value being set. So essentially, we are going to have um, nine elements that is representing uh, nine rows. And this is again, this is all the constraints. And also, we have the self dot columns. And again, same um, as the rows one. So it's default deck at the set and boxes representing all the sub boxes over here. We have the nine sub boxes in total. And we have the self dot board. Essentially, this is representing the entire Sudoku board. So, in terms of input, this is exactly this guy over here. This guy over here. And now, after we get the input out of the way, and then we will start to place constraints. And then we call self dot place constraints right here. Let's go take a look at the function. That is this function over here for all the row index, and then also for all the column index. And then the number that's looking at each one of the cell, if that number is a dot, meaning that it's an empty spot, and then we go continue. Basically, we don't need to place any constraint for the empty spot. However, if the number is not a dot, meaning there is already a number that occupies the cell, and then we place some constraint for that cell. So we look at uh, the current row and column col uh, current column and then place the constraint for that number. So that function actually just, you know, look at the self dot rows at that row, and also self dot columns at that column. Remember the rows, columns, and boxes. That's exactly what we defined already over here. This is all the, it's a default deck with a value of cell set. And we just place the number, add the number to it, right? This is how we place the other uh, constraint for the entire board and again the way that the reason why we're doing this is because of this these three constraints and this is how we implement in terms of in terms of uh, code so after we place all the constraints right here and now we need to find the first pair of um, row index and column index find the unplaced index so the way that we find our unplaced is easily just this. So we go through 
the nine, we go to the nine rows and potentially, right? Because we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We have nine rows in total. So that's why what, what, how many uh, rows we have. This is how many uh, columns we have. Also uh, nine columns. If that is uh, a dot, meaning that that cell has not been occupied yet, so, so we immediately return that row and column index. If we go through this uh, double for loop and then realize that we haven't found any row and column that was not occupied yet, so that means the, the board is already, uh, we have already placed all the numbers, the, the board has been solved successfully. So we need to find the first pair that, has, um, that was not placed right here. So we turn the row and column index and then we call the self object backtrack at the, the row and, uh, and column index we just found. So now let's look at the backtrack function. For all the potential candidates, so essentially in theory, we can place all the numbers from one to nine. One thing to notice in here, the number here is, is actually a string. It's not a numerical number. That's why we have a list over here that contains number one, two, nine as a string. And if we can place this number Basically, this function over here is a safety check to check whether that candidate can meet, um, satisfy all the constraints that we looked at earlier. I'm gonna take we we gonna take a look at the the, the can place function later on after we finish this backtrack um, going through this backtrack uh, function just to avoid some confusion. So if let's say if we can place this number and this number actually satisfy all the constraints and then we go ahead and place that number. Again, we will look at this function later on. And then after we place this number, let's say the number is actually a one, right? And then we place it to the board. And then we call the same function again, find the next pair that was not placed by calling this function that we went through before. And I call it found unplaced. So essentially this found unplaced could be a tuple that representing the row index, a pair of row index and column index that has a dot on it, meaning that the, that cell has not been occupied, or we don't find it, right? Or we just return, we return it none, meaning that all the cells are occupied, right? So if this function return it none, meaning that the entire board is solved and we cannot find an empty spot anymore. So if that found in place is a none, meaning that we solve the Sudoku right here, and then we return a two. Otherwise, we find a pair that is not placed yet, right? Oh, I call it found unplaced. And then this next row index and next column index will just a destruction of this tuple over here. I call it next R and next C. And then this next R and next C will put it back to the backtrack function for the next iteration. So essentially we uh, we cursively call in this function, this backtrack function. If this backtrack function come back to us with a two, and then meaning that um, we actually found a solution from the next C, next R and next C, and then we will return two as well, right? Otherwise, if that does not return a two, and then meaning that we cannot solve this uh, back, we cannot solve this um, Sudoku port with the, the first number, the number that we're looking at right now, and then we just backtrack, and right? just put it back the number. So we, we move the number uh, from the board and then move on to the next number, uh, next potential candidate, and then do the same thing one more time. And yeah, so that is the main idea in this backtrack function. So now let's look at the self dot place or self dot can place and self dot place number and also self dot remove number to, to see how we can implement it. So the can place function, that is right here. So essentially, what we're doing here, basically, we are tracking, we are checking, we are checking the all these uh, three constraints. If the number is already in that um, the default deck, um, the self dot row, and return false, meaning that there is already a number, the same number in the same row. So we return the false, right? meaning that we cannot place that number in that row. Same idea for columns and same idea for the boxes. And um, the only difference with boxes is that 
we have an integer division by three. We are basically converting uh, the row index to um, a bigger row index by dividing the three. So for example, if we have a row index of, let's say this one is four, right? And then four integer divided by three is one. So basically this is gonna be any one for, for here because we have to divide this uh, 81 nine by nine grid by uh, it place in any of these uh, three by three boxes, right? This is how we convert um, the index to the box index. So again, if the number is already in the in that uh, sub box, we just return the false. If if we are not caught in any of these four uh, if statement, just return the true at the end. So that is the uh, safety check. Uh, I call it ten place, right? The next function that we can look at is called place num over here. Place num over here is just basically we are putting the number for the constraint. We right? place the constraint for the number. And also we insert the number to the board for the for the particular coordinate. So this is how we place the number. And same idea when we remove the number, we first have to remove the number out of the constraint right here, and then we put back the number as empty empty but empty dot. So that is the entire rundown of the code. Let's go submit it to prove that this actually works, and it does. And Last thing I want to show you is about the time complexity. And I'm going to show it to you in the editorial. So in here, there's a bit of a discussion that um, the time complexity is going to be a nine factor factorial of nine. You can read it by yourself, but essentially what it's saying is that each row it has each row it has um, nine factorial numbers of possibility because the first cell it can have nine cells to fail to fill. The next cell can have uh, eight possibilities, and then the another one is have seven possibilities. So in total, for each row, we have a nine factorial of different different possibilities, and we have a nine rows in total. So this is the time complexity. It's actually a constant, right here. So this is essentially um, the main part of the code. I hope you find this video helpful. Thank you for watching. See you next time.